What's up, y'all? Got a banger from Simp Saver Sam. Let's get straight into it. My place is 103. Uh, there are not just a place available uh, in this. Uh... Mm, it's gonna be. Why does your jacket look like it's made out of your grandmother's quilt? Shots fired! I'm just Shots saying, fired! what is that? My place is 103, and I, I need yes. my place. <laughs> Six and a half hours later. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Place yeah, but it's my place. But, but you know. Yeah, but, but you know. Wait a minute. It's giving. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving Edna mode. I don't even know what movie this girl's from, but y'all know who I'm talking about. That that's that's what this girl's cut looks like in the back here. Shut your bob cut it ass up. But you, you know, calm room. down. Everybody wants their place. Alejo. Sorry. <laughs> I give you a place. So if you didn't hear what the other passenger was saying, basically she was defending the girl who took the man's seat. The audacity. That girl's just mad because she bought a standing ticket and thought she could take that guy's seat, which he paid for. If someone walked up to you and said, look, you're in my seat, I paid for it, you shouldn't be kicking up a fuss and just sat there telling them, look, you go and move over there. You move your ass out of the way. Just more entitled women trying to protect other entitled women. Mm -hmm. You need to stop dating ugly men. Honey, not you talking about ugly men. We're feeding into their delusion. They think they can pull everyone Got that up. watermelon grapefruit head. Who are you talking to? Us now. Shut your f***ing mouth! <laughs> because if you were actually thinking about your family, the last thing you would do is leave a man who you say is a perfect man and break up his family, break up your children's Girl, relationship with a father, and take dangerous. a bunch of money, unless you didn't actually give a shit about that. Mm. I completely agree with him. I just disagree with the way that he's saying it. I... Tone police. What? <laughs> the tone. Oh but I completely yeah. agree with you. The reason why it's so frustrating is, to have uh, women inside of men's spaces immediately is because it's always tone policing bullshit. And right? you agree with him. Who cares about That's tone crazy. policing? Why do you think tone why, policing? Who cares about tone policing? Because it's about the approach on how you talk <laughs> no, to someone. No, it's not. It's about what's being said. said. And see, this is what women even talk about when um, Kevin Samuels was alive, R.I.P. the Godfather. They would be like, it's not about what you're saying. It's about how you're saying it. We just, it doesn't vibe with our feelings. Facts over feelings. Reality over fiction. You know what I mean? It's as simple as that. We're just going to shoot it to you straight, and this is how we as men operate. We're very unfiltered towards each other. And the thing is, it's the reality. It's the facts. Don't let the facts hurt your feelings. Just because somebody's saying it a certain way, we don't need to soften the blow to be real with you. That's the problem these days. You interpret it. No, no, that's not true. Actually, yeah, that's intention of, lies within it's your just a bunch tone. of feminist bullshit. It, but, but, on, on no, 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 I'm not feminist. We care about things Can differently. Then why are you joking? One person at a time. One person at a time. Why are you joking? We come over. Now, Johnny, it's about. Fuck that. I'm going to say it exactly how it needs to be said. Hold up. Go around the table. Raise your hand if you're a feminist, because I'm not. Oh, we'll get to that in a minute. That's the thing with these feminists, man. Andrew's going to cook them. All about feelings. They don't care about the truth. They want to sugarcoat it. They want yeah, exactly. To it's like it's all about it's all about feelings over facts. Like we don't necessarily care how you feel. We're gonna shoot it to you straight, right? And if you can't take it, then it's okay. Just keep it pushing. Okay, so by by us saying that we tend to want to agree with you, but if we could just deliver it in a if way that actually... If we could just get you to do it how we oh, want. Oh, I'm sorry, there's no interrupting, right? Remember, there's no interrupting? If, if we're having <laughs> if a conversation with each other. If you could say something and we can agree with you, but let's say it in a way that actually makes a difference, then mm -hmm. you're, oh, town police, town police. Okay, but we're not town policing you, we're saying we How could agree. it not be your a town police matters. if you literally are saying to me, I agree with what you say, just don't agree with the tone in which you That's say it. That's not how she said it. That's no, not how she I said, said it. I agree with what you're saying. I don't like how how it's how being delivered. delivered. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. They just want to disagree. They just want to be like, no, no, you can't be right. No. <laughs> you don't like what, the tone? It's what literally what tone policing. What did you say that was? Nothing. She totally. They all agree with oh, me. They, they don't. No. They don't okay. like no. We don't really say that. Yeah. <laughs> Say that. No, I just just, just want to argue. I, I, you have to love it. The delivery. Who, who? It seems like to me the only person with brain cells in that room is Andrew. So yeah. from that video, they say they agree with him, and then at the end they say they don't agree with him. I mean, pick your answer, love, because you're just making yourselves look stupid, honestly. It, it looks so stupid. And the thing is, the problem, my biggest problem is, is these are women. 
These are grown women. These could be somebody's mom, somebody's aunt. These are the women that are leading other women to be women. It's like the fact that you can't even hold each other accountable in a setting like that and say, hey, you know what? You are kind of saying he's tone policing. It's the delivery. It's how he's saying it. it's not what he's saying. Like, ladies, we need to move on. We need to get over it. Like we're in our feelings and that's okay. But like, this is why I always say women grow old. They never grow up. Girls who are engaged, I have a serious question. If you have a three carat diamond or above, I need, I need your advice. I want a three carat diamond. I love the size. Sometimes I look at it though when I'm in store and I'm like, I think it's too big. Is wait, 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 you're going to the store looking at rings when you're single. Do you understand how stupid that sounds like? Why are you looking at rings? You're alone. You shouldn't even be entertaining the idea of having a ring. You are alone. You can't make this stuff up. So she you said, need a boyfriend first before you look at any type of ring. Saying anything under three carats, she's she's not worth that. She, bro, do you understand how how expensive rings are? Rings are very expensive. A three carat diamond, especially if it's like a really high quality, bro. You're spending thousands, fifteen, twenty grand. Well, he's watching you because you're filming yourself in the middle of the gym. Joey Swall, eat him up. Your favorite show? That's pretty arrogant. You know, I'll never understand this trend of filming yourself to post on social media because you want the entire world to see, but making a big deal if one single person looks at you in real life? It's so true, though. That doesn't make sense. And don't zoom in on people and make them the subject of your video without their consent. And did you ask yourself, why is he looking at you? Maybe because you're doing headstands in the middle of the gym. Anyone would look at you. I would look at you. That's <laughs> normal. But no, you'd rather post a video on social media, laugh at this man in your caption, support comments laughing at him, and even support comments saying that he's falling in love with you? Really? Did you ever stop to think how he would feel if he saw this video or the comments, or if he has a significant other, how they would feel? No, because all you care about is likes and attention at his expense. Well, and here's, this, this is why I think we should ban filming in in um, gyms. Like, you shouldn't be able to film in a gym. Because if you film in a gym, like, you're going to get looked at. And, I, and when I go to the gym, I see guys that film themselves, and they look absolutely ridiculous. And what's funny to me is they're not even the guys that are in the best shape. It's like the chubby dudes that are just lifting a bunch of weight with terrible form, and then the girls that are like just skinny and they go in there and they do two sets and then they leave. It's like, what, what is even going on? I have been married for 51 years. Dang. That's a long time. Got two sons, 42 and 40 damn dead beats. <laughs> I'm still supporting the little boogers. <laughs> Needed to take a test. To see if any of us had a kidney good enough for my brother. Found out something interesting. Uh oh. They ain't my kids. There's somebody else's. Damn. Of course, the only good thing is, I know it's not my fault that those two idiots got dumped into this world. Hell, I thought they took after their mother. Stupid. Instead, <laughs> they take after the plumber or the. Postman or the milkman or yeah, they were milkmen back when they came around. I mean, my God. grandfather was a milkman. I bet he was. I bet he was getting in there. Only knows. I do wish I knew who the real fathers were, and they ain't the same. She was bopping a couple of different guys. <sighs> but if I could figure out who they were, I've been practicing law law long enough that I pretty well figure I can sue their ass and get all my money back that I sunk into those two dead meat. <laughs> this man's a savage. Just chaps my ass. <laughs> it, she Damn! couldn't tell me. I'd probably forgiven her. Maybe she belongs not. to the streets. Man, this is sad, nah, honestly. She, nah, your, your wife belongs to the streets, bruv. 
Oh man, that's brutal. What would you do? Let me know in the comments. What would you do if you found out after this long, you're, you're, you know, in your ripe old age of maybe 60, 70 years old, you have two kids and then you find out that they are not yours. Stupid. Like, what would you do? Would you divorce her immediately? Would you stay with her and try to work it out? Like, what would you do? Personally, what I would do is I'd be like, all right, I'm hitting the high road. It's a wrap. You're done. And then I would even try to entertain what he was talking about. It's like suing suing the actual dad and try to get some money out of them for all the money that you wasted on these kids that's not even yours like golly this man really really went through it i feel bad for him because that's rough 51 years good lord i'm a lawyer i work with men all the time and i prefer to work with men i prefer to work with men because there's no drama there's no bullshit there's no backstabbing there's no mm. side comments there's no fakery it's just all logic and getting to and the they point. won't sue you later for nothing <laughs> the idea yeah. that men don't sue i think is not in reality in the workplace it's very unlikely because men have a fixed year end men give tough love to each other and that's why they get better and better and better and better because they're always i guess taking the piss out of each other because it makes them better and they're like hey bro you could do this better mm -hmm. next minute they're better you say that to a woman she's in hr crying and then you've lost your job and you don't know what's happening she's definitely right about men having that you know the thick skin like stuff me my brother for you mates say to each other i mean we really take the piss out of each other well, yeah i know men we give each other a really hard time like but that's that helps us grow like for me and let me know what you guys think in the comments like the guys that i'm closest to are the ones that i give the hardest time like if I'm not close to you, I'm not giving you a hard time. If I'm close to you, I'm giving you quite a hard time. Like I'm grilling you. I'm talking about your mama, your family. I'm talking about everything that I know to get under your skin. I'm talking about it. I'm bringing up old stuff. Like I'm, I'm really giving you a hard time. But if I don't really know you like that, I'm just going to be really nice to you. But what do you guys do? Like, do you give, do you give the guys, you know, more a harder time or an easier time? Let me know in the comments. The number one thing that men absolutely love in women, and it's going to change you from being hookup material to wifey material. And Not that you sitting in the car jiggling your boobs talking about what men want. What? Stupid. Stop. That is showing appreciation and letting him be in his masculine and letting you be in your feminine. That means making him feel important. Men have egos, as we know. I mean, so I agree with her, but she's she's like going out of her way to jiggle her tits. Like, what? Stroking that ego just a little bit can make the biggest difference in the world. And that means things like asking for help bringing the groceries in, even though when you can do it yourself, or saying texts like, hey, babe, I really appreciate you in my life. I don't know what I would do without you. I gotta know exactly who you are. Lord, have mercy. We must stay focused, brothers. We must stay focused like what she's saying is right but at the end of the day she's jiggling her boob like who talks in the car like this yeah like <laughs> who's in the car like guys you just really gotta you know love him and just let him know that you really appreciate him like she's she's baiting dudes to get on her of I almost bet you this girl has an of like why should anybody's chest jiggle that much when talking like what even is that what is that like it doesn't make any sense <laughs> why are you doing that but this is the thing, man. This is the thing. They say that women mature faster than men, and I actually agree with this sentiment, but hold on for a second. Women mature faster than men, emotionally. But the thing is, once a woman hits about the ripe old age of 14 years old is when her emotional maturity stops. She's done. She doesn't mature emotionally more than a 14-year-old. This is why you can see these grown women act acting like children. Men take a little bit longer to mature, right? And even at the end of the day, I think a lot of us men, we are childish in nature. If we get around a good group of friends and we get a, get around a bunch of guys that we love being around, we revert back to our ch like our childlike state and we're giddy, we're having fun, we're poking fun at each other, we're laughing, we're giving each other a hard time. Just because that, that level of play is something that we as men, we lose out on as we get older. Like, let me know in the comments. Do you think as you've gotten older, your life has gotten more fun or has it gotten more hard with work? Most of the time, as we get older, our lives get more stressful, they get harder, you have more responsibilities, which means you have more things to worry about that are outside of your control, which means you have to really think about everything else other than yourself. So you can't think so much like individualistically, you have to think holistically of everything that's going on. You have to control your emotions, you have to control your money, you have to control your actions. Like when you're a kid, you can really do whatever you want. I remember when I was a kid, when I was like... 13 to 15 I had a I had a best friend he had older brothers at the time and they were like hey man 
until about the age of 14, you can get away with everything. And we did that. We were like, this was at the the peak of Jackass. You guys remember Jackass? <laughs> like the, the TV show Steve-O and Johnny Knott? Like jumping off roofs yeah. and like, you know, um, doing just doing stupid things like that. Like that was what we did. And that was like, we, that's why we loved it. We loved it. Like destroying trash cans, vandalizing things. It was just like what we did. It was a vibe. That's, that's what we like to do. But as we as we age as men, we have to suppress this child childish nature because like we have responsibilities. I'm sure all you guys that watch, you have bills. You have people to take care of, whether it's yourself or something else. You have a job like you have things to lose. And that's why I always say that as we get older, we, be we become more conservative because we have things to conserve. When I was younger, I dude, I was super liberal. I was super left leaning, Democrat, liberal. But as I got older and started to gain resources, started to gain experience, I started to realize that like, wow, I'm, I'm more conservative in nature because now I have things to conserve. Now I have things that I want to protect. I have a family. I got a house. I have assets. I have things that I want to be like, I don't want the government to take any of this stuff. I don't want them to take more of my check. You know what I mean? But that's a reality that us men, we, we realize and we know. That's why when we get around our friends, we let loose a little bit. Like I do something every year with like three of my closest friends. We go, we hang out together towards like Christmas time because we're all from the same town. And we just like let loose and vibe out, drink, hang out, talk about old times, catch up. Because I believe as men, we need to have certain friends. And what I mean by that is you need to have certain friends that fit like a certain criteria. So like you need to have your fun friends. You need to have your business friends. You need to have the friends that are creative. You need to have the friends that are into the same hobbies as you. Because the thing is, if you try to lump in your fun friends with your business friends, it muddies the water and it's not as good. I've tried to start a business with one of my fun friends and it just didn't work out. Because me and him, we liked each other's company when we were having fun. And see, there was a certain age, it was around the age of like 26 to 29, where I thought that all my friends needed to be business minded and needed to have that hustle. And if not, I wasn't going to spend time with them. And I really had to check my ego and check myself and say, Hey, some of the friends that you have aren't going to be as business savvy as you. They're not going to want to do the same things as you. So I have certain friends for certain reasons. I have my fun friends. I have my business friends. I have my creative friends. I have my friends that are into the same hobbies as me, right? I have my internet friends, the guys that I've never met, but we're, we're really tight on the internet because you know, the internet's a vast place. And I think it's okay as men to have those friends in those different buckets because it allows you when you're hanging out with those guys, you let loose in whatever regard you're in, right? I, I've, I've recently acquired a mentor and he's just going to be a mentor for me. And we're just going to talk business. Even though we went to high school together, we're only going to talk business. Nothing's going to be about fun or pastimes or memories. We're going to talk about the future and what's next and what I can do to build my audience and monetize what I'm doing right now. Right. And thinking about other business ventures. That's what we're going to talk about. So I think as men, you need to have your wolf pack. You need to have a culmination of different men that you spend time with and that you hang out with that give you that variety of life. The fun friends, the business friends, the hobby friends, maybe your online gaming friends. Like You need to have that group around you because once you have that strong wolf pack, you can learn from them and you can also enjoy life. As men, it's tough out there. Everybody knows it's hard. Men have it the worst. We have it the hardest. We go to work, we get work the hardest. The standards are the highest for men. You know what I mean? So we need to have an outlet to be able to live life and, and be a little bit more free. Women have it easy. They get to go out and do whatever they want. They, every day is Coachella for women. <laughs> every day they can do whatever they want. They can act like children. I'm going to steal your seat. Well, and then other women will defend her. You know what I mean? Like a woman will steal your seat and then you got Edna Mode sitting there, you know, defending her. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this happens. As men, nobody's there to save us. And I think that's something at the end of the day I realized when I was probably around... 29 or 30 is that nobody's here to save me, bro. Nobody's going to come and save you. As a woman, you can have a man come in and save you. You know how likely it is that a woman's going to come in, swoop in and save me? It's not happening. Stupid. It's not happening, bro. It's never going to happen. So we have to realize that really our future is up to us and nobody's going to save us. But I think that's why men are built the way we're built because we can handle that kind of pressure. And remember, pressure does one of two things. It either busts pipes or it makes diamonds. And the thing is, you have control over where that pressure goes. Always remember that. Bust pipes or makes diamonds and you have control over where that pressure goes. That's why I love pressure. I love it. I absolutely love it because pressure to me, it makes diamonds. I see it as an opportunity. I have a growth mindset and I go, all right, I'm going to take this. I'm going to make it into a positive. A lot of people take pressure as like, I'm getting weighed down. 
Everything's against me. This is so hard. Well, I mean, if you're religious, if you ask God for strength, he's going to give you trials and tribulations. If you ask God to make you stronger, he's going to give you a workout. You know what I mean? You ask him to give you patience, he's going to give you things to test your patience. Like all these things, you got to take them and turn them into a positive. But it's that mindset that makes people grow. Have a growth mindset. Don't have a fixed mindset. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to cop the ebook. It's in the description below. The four pillars of personality. Shout out to everybody that's got it. Appreciate the feedback. Be feedback we've gotten in the Discord so far. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.